Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into the Profitable Musician Show. Hey, I am here today with Nicole Ricardo. I'm so excited to be talking about Instagram. I know for me, Instagram has been a bit of a stumbling block and maybe it is for you guys too, maybe depending on what generation you're in. But for me, I was having a little bit of trouble really getting into Instagram. So I'm excited for Nicole to give us some of her tips. I've already learned a lot from her through some of her other content, but uh, so I wanted to share that with you guys. So before we get into that, uh, I'd love to have you let them know, Nicole, like what's your background? How did you start really focusing on Instagram? And I know that you have some background in music as well, which makes you a perfect person to have on this show. So let them know a little bit about that too. Yeah. So I actually am a classical flutist. Um, I have been doing music related things since I was in kindergarten, um, started with piano, moved to singing, then I picked up a flute and, you know, the rest is history. So I um, do have my degrees in flute performance as well. Actually, both my bachelor, uh, well, my bachelor's and my master's are in flute performance. And it's interesting because now obviously what I do <laughs> is not super related to that. So the way that I got here when I was in grad school, I actually started running a woodwind quintet and through the power of social media really, and, you know, <laughs> networking, pitching, you know, P PR and marketing, basically. Um, I was able to take that group and we went on a tour doing guest artist residencies at universities. We got a recording offer from Naxos. We commissioned new music, the whole nine, you know? So that was really the first thing that kind of got me dabbling and like, Oh, I think, uh, this, this is powerful. There's something here. <laughs> so from there, um, after I graduated, I did end up doing a normal nine to five because we got bills to pay. Um, and through, through that, I, I did end up working in marketing, doing websites, stuff like that through my nine to five. So I did that for quite a while and just really threw myself into learning anything and everything I could about it. And after going to a few different businesses and really seeing the impact that it could have, I eventually was like, well, why am I not using this to <laughs> build my own career and do what I want to do? So that's what I did. I made the decision. And from the time I, you know, redid my materials, started using social media strategically. Um, it took me eight months and then I was able to quit my job and become full-time self-employed. So yeah. And a, a big reason that I was able to do that is thanks to Instagram. That's where I really honed in on and focused on for building my community, finding my people. And, uh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a lot of how I was able to build my career. <laughs> That's awesome. And I, I love that you, I love that you didn't just jump in, like you were still doing your nine to five and you were building your social media presence and your community mm -hmm. and all that. And then you moved over, which I think is really smart. So I'm curious why, why Instagram? Like, why is that your favorite social media platform? What is so special and amazing and great about Instagram to connect with, you know, your like community of people? Yeah, good question. So when it comes to social media, I mean, there are a lot of platforms out there, right? But when it comes to true social media platforms, meaning a platform that you can actually go on, build relationships with people, build a true community, 
um, the way that I view it is really it's Facebook or Instagram, right? Because yeah, we have Pinterest, there's YouTube, but those are more search engines. Like people are going to go to, to YouTube or Pinterest to search for like how to blah, 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 how to get this wine stain out of my carpet. You know, that's what they're using those for. So those are more search engines. So then for the true social media platforms, we have Facebook or Instagram. Now, the reason that I prefer Instagram to Facebook is because Facebook unless you already have like a massive audience, it's pretty difficult to organically grow an audience. And especially Facebook pages, that's like pretty much pay to play now, you know, unless you're sinking a lot of money in ads, it's just not even going to be seen. Um, So on Instagram, you know, there are literally billions of, of users on Instagram every single day. So it's a massive audience. I mean, every, every age range demographic, they are also on Instagram and, you know, just the accessibility of being able to comment and message with people back and forth. And, you know, you can set your profile to, to public, to allow people to come in, get to know you, get to know more about what you do, your life. Um, I've just found that it's really, it's really easy to organically build real relationships there and be able to build a large community a lot faster than you can on somewhere like say Facebook. Hmm. That it's, it's very true. Like I'm, I started out on Facebook, but because I started out really, really early, like you said, like I have that community already, or you can do a group on Facebook, uh, but page reach really isn't, isn't very good anymore unless you're paying. So it totally makes sense what you're saying. So I'm curious, like what would make someone want to follow you on Instagram as let's say as a musician, like if I'm on Instagram and I see a post from you, what would make me want to go ahead and like click through to the bio, check you out, follow you? What do we need to be doing to be worthy of that? Yeah. So a lot of that, I, I think When it comes to getting follows on Instagram, there are are a couple different factors here, and it's really going to come down to your content, so your photos and your caption, but also your engagement. Um, So let's talk about the content first. So content, obviously, Instagram is a visual platform, so you want to have really eye-catching photos if you, you know... If you're a musician, like say I'm a flutist, right? So if you go to any flutist's account, it's going to be a lot of, um, you know, here's a picture of my flute on, on top of some sheet music, right? That's what everybody is doing. So that's all I'm posting. It's not going to stand out. You know, if you're scrolling through a feed or scrolling through a flute hashtag, it's just going to look the same and, and blend in. So one of the easiest ways is look at what everybody else is doing <laughs> and don't do that. Do something <laughs> different. Like we're all creative, right? We're musicians. This is what we do. We always have all of these ideas spinning. So we use that to your advantage. Look at what everybody else is doing and then do something different than that. So that's, that's kind of the photo aspect of content. Then obviously we have the captions. One of the things with captions that I always encourage is write like how you speak. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, especially musicians who have, you know, that more like formal academic training, right? Like I got my bachelor's and master's in it. We're really um, shoved into this box of academic writing and using all of this like jargon and everything has to be professional, but professional is not the same thing as formal. You Mm -hmm. can still be professional, but be yourself. So one of the things that I am a huge, huge advocate for is infusing your unique personality. And that's also something that's going to be tied into your brand, right? Things that people will remember you for. So for me, yeah, I'm, I'm a flutist. I teach about Instagram. I like digital courses. We love passive income, right? But who am I as a person? Okay. Well, I'm also a dog mom (laughs) and I also love New Orleans. Like I am a New Orleanian at heart. So those are things that that I share. And those are things about my personality that I talk about, I'm open about, and it also helps people to connect with me on a more human level, you know, because if all I'm ever talking about is, uh, this is what I do. This is what I offer. This is what I know about, right? Eventually people are going to kind of tune you out. They need to have that human connection and get to know who you are as a person. So 
uh, picking those couple things about you that are fun, that you want people to know about you and, and showing that side of yourself, you know, because the fun part about that is then that's what people are going to start remembering you for too. Like people tag me in new Orleans things <laughs> on a weekly basis. Like I'm getting DMS. They're sending me things. They're sending me house listings. Oh, I just found your new Orleans house. I'm like, that's what we want, you know? So it really builds that association, keeps you top of mind for them. Um, then the other side of, of this with the following on Instagram is going to be engagement. Um, Instagram is definitely one of those platforms where you're going to get what you put into it, which is why a lot of people get deterred from it because it's, it's not overnight, you know, and we live in an age of instant gratification. I'm totally guilty of this too. You know, one of the things I say is I'm like, I want it like yesterday, you know, but with Instagram and I mean, really any social media platform, we have to have realistic expectations that, building a community, growing your audience, these things take time and you do have to invest some, some energy and some love into doing it. So engagement is when you are going out and you are actually finding your exact target people, you know, where are they hanging out? What hashtags are you using? What other accounts are they following? Where can you find your people and, and engage with them, you know, leave them some likes, leave them a really thoughtful, engaging comment, um, watch their stories, engage with them that way, you know, get them to notice you because the reality is, I mean, it, it doesn't matter how great you are. People don't know yet. We have to get them to pay attention and engagement on Instagram is the way that we're going to be able to do that. It's, you know, we're showing them love, um, giving them, giving them likes. Hey, I love what you're doing. Right. Then they're going to come do the same for you. It's a, a lot of reciprocity on Instagram. So that's, that's really how you're going to be able to find your people and start growing your community. Yeah. I'm glad that you mentioned that because it, it, it I think me, especially musicians, we get into this mindset of like, we hear about people that something goes viral, you know, they, they put it something on TikTok and all of a sudden they have a million followers or, you know, their YouTube video goes viral. And so we just think, well, that's what we're reaching for all the time, but that is like 0.001 percent of people that happens to. And so we need to realize that we have to put into it as much as we're expecting to get out, if not more, mm -hmm. because we can't, I mean, we can't just expect to be one of those outliers. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. So first of all, let's talk about how do you figure out who your perfect person is, who your, um, you know, different names, your, your avatar, your, um, you know, perfect customer, however you want to call it, your, the person that would just love to know about your music and want to listen to it. How do you figure out who that person is? And then how do you start kind of stalking them on Instagram? <laughs> yeah. So for performers specifically, um, the easiest way to do this is by finding who your music is similar to, right? So is there a popular artist? Like who are your influencers? Who are your inspirations? Who are maybe your teachers? Maybe they have a, a large audience already. So then you're going to find those people on Instagram. So maybe, you know, maybe your music is super inspired by John Mayer. Okay. Well, he has a massive following on Instagram, right? So pretty good chance that the people who are following John Mayer and enjoy his music might also enjoy yours. So really looking for, for those influences, um, and people that you're similar to and go engage with their audience because again, most likely scenario, they're probably also going to enjoy yours. Yeah. And when you say engage, like, should you just be commenting? Should you follow those people? Should you be commenting on maybe things that like are on John Mayer's page and then, you know, commenting on that other people are commenting on what's the best way to connect like that and be seen? Yeah. So engagement is a whole rabbit hole that we could go down on, you know, all of the different ways to do this, but an easy way of doing this is, okay, let's say John Mayer's account, right? We're going to look at maybe all of the people that just commented on his new post because they're there, they're showing up, they're engaged, they're cheering him on. That's what we want in our community too, right? So we're going to go through, you can go through all of those people that are, are liking, commenting, engaging, go over to their account and leave 
leave them a few likes, leave them a thoughtful and engaging comment, right? And the key here, when I say thoughtful and engaging comment, ask them a question, engage them in conversation, ask them something that you're genuinely curious about. You know, maybe they, um, maybe they're also a musician and they posted some awesome piece and you're like, oh, wow, that piece is awesome. Like, have, did you write that yourself? Right. Something that you're genuinely curious about. And this is just kind of an aside. One thing that I hear a lot about Instagram and specifically engagement is people like, oh, it feels so inauthentic. It feels like sleazy and scammy and spammy, but it, it is only that way if you make it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are some people online that teach that way. Right. And you can, you can smell these messages from a mile away, right. You'll get the DMS of like, Hey girl, tell me about your business. It's like, Oh, get out of here. Like, it's so cringy. Like don't do that. Okay. Be a human and ask them something that you are genuinely interested to know more about, right? Like don't be fake about it. Just ask them something that would be and just don't genuine. hit them over the head with your music without having a conversation first I am always getting dms that are like hey would you check out my track and share it with like I don't even know who the heck you are oh why would God. I do that yeah those are like the absolute worst um so do not do that I have seen musicians do that before well they'll, they'll send a, a video like a dm of their youtube or like oh hey check out my music or they'll just leave a comment hey I just released this new track check it like that is the fastest way to get deleted and blocked do well, and then when they didn't respond to my dm they started putting it in my comments and I'm like I'm blocking this person yeah this don't do that that is so <laughs> spammy like that you are I, I'm sorry I say this with love but if you're doing that like you are one of the reasons that people hate Instagram okay stop doing that (laughs) be a human people have to connect with you like this is not oh my god people do not want to get hit over the head like that and it's not going to get you anywhere it's going to actually create a bad reputation for you and people are going to run from you so don't do that be a human be authentic um so yeah leave some likes a thoughtful engaging comment if if their account resonates with you and you feel so inclined feel free to follow them as well um but again you know do not just do this like following everybody and then go back the next day and like unfollow them don't do that either because that is also super spammy and sleazy and scammy and also going to make people hate you so let's not do that either (laughs) oh gosh yeah so the other question that I would always kind of baffle me a little bit is like when they started, you know, when I first started on Instagram, it's just posts, right? Now there's posts, there's stories, there's lives, there's IGTV, there's reels. Like, should we be doing different kinds of content in all of these places? Like, is there certain kinds of content that fit better for certain place, you know, placements on Instagram? Yeah. So what I will say is <laughs> this is one of the fun parts with social media. When Instagram releases new features, um, it kind of reworks their entire algorithm. Mm. So like right now, the newest feature is reels. So reels right now on Instagram it is January, 2021. Um, right now on Instagram reels are performing really, really well. And the Instagram algorithm is really prioritizing them. So if you are looking to get an insane amount of organic reach, be posting reels every single day. And that is something like I have literally in the past few months seen people who have grown their accounts by two, five, 10,000 people just from posting reels. So the algorithm is really, really prioritizing those right now, um, which is also awesome because as musicians, you know, what we do is awesome. <laughs> audio. So having access to posting a video of us playing and knowing that it's going to perform really well. And the algorithm is really going to prioritize that that can give you a huge advantage and help you grow really quickly. So, um, real. So that's the hot thing right now. So that's just kind of something, you know, moving forward to keep your eye on is when Instagram releases new features like that, be an early adopter, jump on board and start using it and really pay attention to, you know, what, what is showing up on your explore page? What is showing up on your home page? Right. Cause if you start noticing, Oh, every other post is a reel, right? Okay. Well, the algorithm is prioritizing that. So maybe post more reels. So that way the algorithm will prioritize prioritize your posts too. So just, um, staying on top of that and just keeping in mind that when Instagram does release a new feature like that, the algorithm changes to prioritize it. Mm. Makes sense. 
so if I'm if I've got something that's happening, like say I've got an event coming up or something, and I'm doing a live stream, or hopefully soon we're doing live in person gigs. Um, is it best to post that as a post or a story or both? Like, what's the best way to promote something like that? Yeah. So when it comes to promotion on Instagram and really on any social media platform, to be honest. Um, I recommend putting it everywhere because the reality is every single person in your audience is not going to see every piece of content that you post. So let's say Susan in my audience, you know, today I have a concert tomorrow. And so I put up a post, I put up a reel tonight. And then I also post in my stories, right? Maybe Susan sees my story but somehow my post and the reel don't show up in her feed, you know? So by putting it in multiple places, it actually is going to give you more opportunity to reach more of your audience, which is great. Um, one thing I will say though, is, you know, don't post it all at once. Like don't put up like a post and then a reel and then an IGTV and then do a lot, like, don't do that all the same time. Like let's spread it out a little bit. Um, and that would even be something, you know, for me, I would spread it out over like a week, right? So maybe every day that week, every post that you put up either is talking exclusively about your concert or at least has like a little PS, right? PS, if you didn't, haven't heard yet, I have my concert on this date, make sure you, you know, click the link about to get your ticket or whatever it is, right? Then you can uh, mention it at some point in your stories every day. Then maybe, um, maybe two days out, you do a live. That's like a little live practice session, right? And let people see you getting prepped for it. Then maybe, maybe the day of you do a real little snip from your, um, dress rehearsal, right? So you can get, again, use your creativity, get creative with this, but don't be afraid to put it everywhere because you should put it everywhere. Don't feel like you're annoying people. You're not, people are not going to see every single thing that you post. That's good to know. Um, so let's say, cause I, mean, I hear this from musicians all the time. Like, why do I need to be on Instagram right now? Because I'm not doing anything right now. Maybe I'm in the phase where I'm like writing for my album and recording and I'm not releasing it until, you know, later in the year or something like that. Shouldn't I just focus on that? And then I'll go on and start doing stuff on Instagram once and putting out singles or something. Do you have any advice for like, should they be building up some kind of an on-ramp? Oh, yes. <laughs> I have very strong feelings about this. Um, and this is, to be really honest, one of my biggest pet peeves <laughs> because it does not happen overnight. Building your community, growing an audience does not happen overnight. I cannot even tell you how many clients I have had come to me saying like, oh, I just sunk in $10,000 or $20,000 recording this album. And, you know, I was doing this and working on this and I had to practice and I just, you know, but then it released and nobody bought it. Or I only got a couple sales. You know, my mom, my mom bought 10 CDs and that's it. Like that is the opposite of what we want. Right. So what the problem with that is they did it backwards. You have to have an audience in place waiting and ready and cheering you on before you invest money in, in releasing something like an album, right? Because the reality is a, a, a lot of us don't just have 10, $20,000 sitting around in our bank account waiting to, you know, make an album with like, we have to save up for that. Maybe we're going in debt for that. You know, it's, that's a, a lot of money. And so you have to make sure as the artist, you want to give yourself the best chance possible for it to be successful. Right. And so, yeah, we need to practice. We want to make sure we're putting out high quality music, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's the foundation, right? That's a given, but in order for it to be successful, you need people to buy it. Right. And if you want people to buy it, where, where are these people going to come from? Like, you can't just go post flyers at your local Starbucks. Hey, album, like you're not, I mean, maybe you get one sale from that, but like, you're not going to get a lot of sales from that. I mean, you know, you, it, it's, it's social media. That's, it's the easiest way. It's the fastest way to do it. So really if, if you are not currently using social media to build and grow your audience, you should be using social media like right now, like pull out your phone, create your account if you don't have one or like make the decision today that you're going to start doing it because really at the end of the day, it's like, it's your future, you know, it's your business. Do you really want to 
uh, just sit here and cross your fingers and hope that, that you get that viral video, like Brie was talking about earlier, right? That like 0.0008% chance of that happening. Like that's leaving it to chance. I am not okay with leaving my future and my success just up to chance, you know? So instead, that's why using social media strategically, getting on there, having a plan for your engagement every single day, showing up, being consistent, and, you know, building that audience and community, that is an actual plan. That is an actual strategy that is going to attract people to you. It's going to grow your audience. It's going to grow your community. So that way, you know, maybe you build up your, your following to a couple thousand even. Then you have people there that are, they, they already know you. They like you. They love what you're doing. They support you. So then when you go in with that album that you just dropped 10 grand on, right? then you're going to have people there ready and waiting that will buy it from you. But if you don't do this work to grow an audience for yourself first, I mean, who's, who's going to buy it, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I I'm so on board with that for sure. And, you know, for me, it would be one step further in that I want them to build that up on Instagram. And then I want you to have a way to get them off of Instagram onto your email list. So you can even, you know, dive in deeper with people and connect with them. Um, but let's say we did that and let's say, you know, so then we're, we're sick. You know, we do pretty well with our album, but like the rest of the year, like we're doing other things, right? We're, we're selling concert tickets. We're maybe we provide, you know, private voice lessons or, um, you know, we're doing a Patreon campaign or something. So how, what are like the direct links to actual income that Instagram can provide? Like, what is the best way to turn somebody from like, they're a fan on Instagram to here's how you can pay me for something? Yeah. So a lot of this, and I go much more in depth on this in my (laughs) Instagram course, but my philosophy on this is Anytime you are not directly promoting something is a big opportunity to be strategically building demand for whatever it is you offer. So whether that's voice lessons, whether that's, um, you know, buying tickets to a concert that you're going to do, whether it's supporting you on Patreon, right? You can get really, really strategic with this free content that you're putting out and make sure that it's going to do a lot of that heavy lifting for you. And this is one thing, you know, why a lot of people get frustrated with Instagram because we're not quite sure what to post, right? And it's like, oh, well, it just feels surface level and I don't really know what to say. And, you know, which I mean, that's what most people do. But if you shift your mindset here and instead we're using this content to really strategically educate our audience and get them into the mindset of, you know, Hey, this is why you should be, you know, want to take flute lessons, or this is why taking flute lessons will help with, uh, you know, improving your kids test scores, or this is why, um, coming to this concert is going to help you have so much more fun in your life, right? Like painting the picture for them because people, people are emotional right? That's, that's how we make buying decisions. It's it, a lot of it is emotional. And so if you can kind of paint that picture, get them to imagine themselves, get them understanding why it's so important, how it's going to help them, um, the mistakes that it, it will be making the things that, you know, the pain that it's causing them if they don't do it right. Like, Oh, imagine waking up on Christmas morning and you walk out and you, uh, see your Christmas tree lit up and you look outside and there's snow drifting through the window. But now imagine you walk out and there's also this beautiful Christmas album playing that changes the whole mood, right? So even just painting the picture with something as simple as that is really going to help get your audience into the mindset of why, why they should want and need what you have to offer. So that way, then when you do go in with your promotions, you are going to have people ready and waiting and lining up around the block to work with you, which is exactly what we want. <laughs> yeah. I, I always think of it as like trying to create FOMO for them. Yep. <laughs> right. So, you know, highlight some of your best voice students and the results you've been able to get for them. Um, one thing we've been doing with women of substance is shouting out people that we're featuring on the show and then, you know, on our stories and then people see that and they're like, Oh, I want to be on that show. You know, so that's actually bringing in the new people that want to submit music to the show. So 
people, number one, they all, a lot of times don't know everything that you do. They don't know everything that you offer. I've even discovered this. I'm like, I've been around for so long. Doesn't everybody know what I do? And then I'm finding out that there's a lot of people that don't, that just followed me for some random reason. And they're just now when I'm starting to do some more, like, this is what we do kind of posts and, you know, frequently asks questions about, you know, what we do in this part of our brand. People are like, wow, I didn't know you did that. Or, Ooh, I want to get involved in that. And I'm like, how did you not know? You know, but <laughs> like, you have to remember that not everybody is focusing on you all the time. You are focusing on you all the time. So, you know, all about this, what you do, right. But not everybody else does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And you know, another thing to keep in mind, especially with Instagram is ideally we're consistently growing your audience and bringing new people in. Right. So one mm -hmm. of the things that I recommend doing is at least every nine posts, do an introduction post, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's just, you know, introducing yourself or doing something fun, like, hey, two truths and a lie, or, you know, what, whatever it is, but reintroducing you to your people because you are constantly going to be getting new people in your audience who maybe don't know about you yet, or maybe don't know all of the things that you offer. So even doing something like having um, story highlights that are very clear on showing the different things that you offer, right? So you really want to make sure that you're um, not just talking about who you are and what you do once you, you need to put that into your regular rotation. So that way, all of those new people that are joining you and joining your community can also start to know how amazing you are and all of the awesome things that you do. That's such a good point. Um, I mean, we've been doing that. We've been doing kind of a brand reset lately, and I've been amazed to realized that people didn't know we did all these things. And I'm like, well, of course, you know, not all of them were here, you know, <laughs> even a few months ago. So that's a really good point. And I kind of liken it to what I always tell musicians about when they're performing and they're performing to a room where people can walk in and out like a coffee shop or something, always mm -hmm. reset the room every like 30 minutes and remind them who you are and, you know, like, cause they just, they won't know cause they just walked in. And so people feel uncomfortable about like, oh, but I already introduced myself. Well, some people in the room don't know. And other people, they're not going to be like, oh my gosh, you already said that. They're not. It's not, it's not a problem. <laughs> so totally. Yeah. I love that idea. Yes, exactly. And like, I even do that on like Instagram lives too. If I'm doing a live, mm -hmm. um, every, usually like every 10, 15 minutes, I'll do another like, Hey, and just for anybody who's just joining, you know, leave some hearts, let me know you're here. And this is what we're talking about. Right. You kind of have to remind people. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point too. When, when we're doing live streams as musicians, Okay. So we've covered a ton. Um, is there anything that we didn't cover yet that you want to make sure that they know about using Instagram as a musician? Uh, well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, just kind of what we touched on earlier. I mean, the best time to start is literally right now. Um, because it's just, it's really empowering you to take your future and your success into your own hands. You know, you don't want to wait to start until you already have something to sell, or even until you already know what you're going to sell, right? Even if you're somebody that's in the position of like, well, you know, I am a musician, but I don't know exactly what I want to do yet. Start now anyway, just in case, you know, because once you get to that point where you're like, okay, I think I have this idea now, we're going to start doing this. You will thank yourself profusely <laughs> if you have already started and already have that audience, um, being built up and your community being formed and people out there who are cheering you on and supporting you. It really, really, really makes a world of difference once you have that community there. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, for myself, I know, you know, I started a long time ago, but I didn't have very good strategy. I'm just like, I know I need to be there. So I'm going to start and I would like do stuff and then not do stuff. And do. But I'm still glad that I started because it allowed me to build up like a base and then when I really wanted to focus and know, knew the direction I was going and all that stuff and maybe pivoted a little bit, there may be a few people that fell off, but this whole core of people comes with you, you know, yeah. so you always, you have them. So I, I totally agree. It's the whole thing about when's the best time to plant a tree, you know get started right now for sure. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all this awesome information about Instagram. Where can people get in touch with you? Where, how can they follow you on Instagram? 
Yes. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. And yes, if anybody has any questions about this, you want to follow along Instagram, I'm sure we're shocked is going to be the best place to find me. <laughs> and so my Instagram handle is just at Nicole Ricardo and I C O L E R I C C A R D O. So you can find me on there. Come hang out. If you have any other questions, feel free to DM me and let me know. I don't bite. I am also not spammy or sleazy. So, <laughs> um, yeah, Instagram. <laughs> you're not I would never have you on the show if you were one of those people that did the hey girl. <laughs> oh god the worst I know well <laughs> while I'm thinking about it you guys go follow us on Instagram profitable musician LLC come follow us on Instagram and we can um, have a conversation about what you learned on this episode thanks so much Nicole really appreciate you hanging out with me thank today. you Bree thanks for listening to the profitable musician show I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician. 